Hello YouTube, today we are going to learn how to test components that use SWR. As you can see on the screen, I already have a component that receives a country and uses that country to perform an HTTP call. Then I'm already handling the loading scenario, the error scenario and also the scenario where we don't receive anything from our server. Then, as you may imagine, I'm also handling the success scenario when our API returns something to us. Seeing this component in action, you can see that at the moment I'm receiving all the car brands that are from Germany. If I click in France, I will receive all the car brands that exist in France, and when I click in Italy, we will see an error scenario. As you can see, I received the 500 and clicking on Italy, we will have this sorry Italian friends. And as you can see, we are showing that exact same message on our screen. Now that that is being said, we are ready to install MSW. And in case you are also using Fetch instead of Axios, feel free to install the polyfill I have now on the screen. Then if you want to use that polyfill, you just need to go to your just config.js, make sure you have a setup files after env, and then in that file just import the polyfill you decided to install. With that being said, I can close my just configuration files and go finally to our testing component. And inside this testing component, the first thing we need to do is to start to create our setup server using MSW. So let's import MSW right now. And the first thing we need to do right now before we forget about it is to put our server to start before any test runs, our server to stop after all the tests are run, and then to reset the handlers between each test. Now, the first thing we want to do is to do our get call. And if you remember from our component, our get call was something like API slash cars and our country was something dynamic. If I go over here, you can see slash API slash cars and our country is something dynamic. Then I will just put the request response and context and this is very, very similar with Express. Then inside I will return a response and I will just return that JSON. Now, because this endpoint is dynamic, we want to access our parameters to get the country. And we can do it like that, request.parameters.country. Then we can add a second option. And to make it a bit more realistic, we can add a delay of 100 milliseconds. Now, let's be honest, if we do that, we will end up with a lot of if else logic for our country. Because if it is, for example, France, we want to return three or four brands from France. If it is, for example, Italy, we want to return an error. So a way to avoid those type of things is instead of using these dynamic parameters, we will have something like this, API slash cars slash friends. And then inside that, I only care about everything that is happening for friends. So I will just return custom friends brand one and custom friends brand two. And I will also add a delay of 100 milliseconds. With that one done, I can do a copy paste of this and create our German version, which is exactly the same thing. And we can do something very, very similar for Italy. The difference that we have for Italy is that we will have this context status of 500 to have an error for Italy. And I will also need to have a message over here saying the unit test message for the error scenarios. So we can then test it. At this stage, as you saw, I'm using the same exact things we are using in our real API, but for your tests, you can even put other countries and return some random messages over here. All right. So now that we have that, our first test will be to come over here and I already have an async over here. So the first thing I need to do is to wait for my loading spinner to disappear. So I will do a wait for element to be removed and I will do screen dot get by text and I will wait for the loading to disappear. If you don't know what this loading is, when you come, for example, to Germany, we have that loading for around a second in our real API. Now that we did that, our waiting spinner disappeared. So I can then come over here and do the following renders the expected brands. All right. And now that we have this, I can just do expect screen dot get by text. And I will say custom friends brand one to be in the document, right? So we have that one and I will also have the custom brand two to be on the document. Let's just double check 
that we have the right names. So custom friends one and custom friends B2. So that's exactly what we have at the moment. And if you are asking before I run the test, if you are asking why will this one not be triggered at the moment? Well, these ones, for example, slash API slash car slash Italy will be it before we eat this country dynamic. If for whatever reason, instead of having that in this order, if I add it in that order, then it would mean that this Italy will never ever be it because this country will work as a catch all for everything like that. Okay. So now you know that if you now put, for example, I don't know, Portugal, which is my country, it will be on this one. For our scenario, we don't even need this one. So I will just leave it comment. You can see it in my repository, but for now it's not being used at all. So we have that one. Let's run our tests. And now that we will run our tests, we will have these four tests running for the moment. So before I pick Germany, I will already go to Italy because Germany will be nothing more, nothing less than a copy paste of what we did for France, right? And so I will just pick up Germany right now. And the first thing I will do in Germany is to copy our loading spinner. So I will put it over here because this will highlight a problem for us that you might also have in your day to day life using SWR for your tests. And now I can create a new test and call it show expected error message or show server error message, something that makes sense for us. And I will just do screen dot get by text. I will put that message to be in the document. All right. So now I have that test over here. And if I run this one, you will probably have a slight surprise over here, but let's the test run and you will see that this second test will literally fail. And the reason it will fail, if I go up on the screen, it will be because for the second test, the loading spinner is no longer there on the screen. And there are two main reasons. The first one is because SWR does caching. So if you want, we can just open my SWR and what my SWR is, is nothing more, nothing less than just a wrapper on the normal SWR config. If you prefer to use the normal one, it will work the same thing and you will call it value. And in my case, I will call it SWR config. That's the only difference. Now, everything we put inside is the same. And one thing that you care about will be the dedupe interval to be zero. By default is two seconds. So every single call that happens for the same endpoint in the next two seconds, it will not happen. And then we will we'll just override the cache of SWR itself. And we will do the following new map. And now what this means is that we overwrote the cache of SWR. So if I run this test again, you will see that now this test will pass. So if you are now asking, Hey, but Bruno, having have to put this in every single test, that's a bit painful, right? Imagine that I have 100 renders in my application. Do I need to do this everywhere in my application? Well, no, <laughs> you don't need to do that in your application. Now, in order to not repeat yourself, you have usually two options. You define these custom all providers and then you import it everywhere in your application or what some people do is to create what's called a custom render and then instead of using the render from react testing library you will use the custom render let me show you how you can do it so we will do the following i will go over here and i will put them even there so no big deal to have it here and now i just need to copy this line over here. Oops, I copy this line and I can delete everything that I have there. And the only thing I need now to close is my SWR config itself. And now I just need to import again from React and import this one from React testing library. And so now instead of having to put this my SWR config everywhere, you can put this into a file you like in your project and then everywhere you just import your custom render. So let me show you using our custom render. So I will replace that by the custom render. And now the only thing we need to do is to do literally that. 
And now, if I run my tests once again, you will see that our tests are still passing and we don't need to define that context everywhere across our application. So I will now just do the tests for our friends again, just to replace this little bit and put it like that for friends. And as you may imagine, I will also add the tests now for Germany and the tests for Germany will be very similar to the tests that we already did for friends. So I will just copy this one. And now instead of having our test as friends, I will have Germany here. I will have Germany there. I just need to copy our weight for the loading to disappear. So I will do asynchronous. And at this moment, you will have no problems whatsoever between your tests running with caching or no caching because literally every single time one of your tests is going to run is in complete isolation between each other. The last thing we need to do is to test our component for the no data scenario. And so what I'm going to do is to do a server use and I will just copy the call that we are doing to friends and instead of returning custom friends one and custom friends b2, I will start to return an empty array. So I will copy this little bit over here I will paste it over there. I will just format this code. And now, as I said, I will just return an empty array. I can copy now this custom and the loading waiting, and I will just change it from Italy to be France. I will also do the same with this line. And now instead of waiting it for the error before, I will wait for the no show data or no data to show. All right, I will copy this one. I will paste it over here. And now at this stage, you probably start to understand why we had at the beginning of our tests this after each server.reset handlers. Because if I now run any test after I did dead, all the tests that are calling friends will receive an empty array. And usually we want isolation between the tests. So if I add another test after this describe, you don't want that the next describe will get my empty array. And that reset handlers is just making sure that for each test that starts, the handlers that exist are the handlers that we passed initially in this component. So I am now in the moment to run our tests one more time. And if these tests pass, we have everything done for this video. So if you have any question or any suggestion, please let me know in the comments down below. I will commit this to my repository, leave the link into the description. Hope to see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.